Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. In this short video, I'm going to talk about a subject, autoimmune diseases, and what is triggering your autoimmune disease. Now, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below, and right next to it is the bell notification. On Facebook, please hit the like button, and if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend. I always appreciate a growing audience. When it comes to autoimmune diseases, now there's a couple different ways to diagnose. I always prefer diagnosing an autoimmune disease with blood work comprehensive blood panels. You want to find the antibodies that are attacking a certain type of tissue. In addition, you may also need just symptoms. Some autoimmune diseases do not show up on a blood work like fibromyalgia, so a lot of them are diagnosed through symptoms, but you want a skilled practitioner to make sure that they diagnose it correctly because I've had my share of patients who were misdiagnosed with an autoimmune disease and it turns out they didn't have it. So just an FYI. So let's back up a little bit. Let's, what is an autoimmune disease? An autoimmune disease, basically your, your cells are not, are not telling the difference between self and non-self. So it can happen with any tissue. Okay, and what happens, you create these autoantibodies which can create any tissue throughout the system. And really what it comes down to, we have a bunch of cells of our immune system and the two cells in particular are the TH17 and the T regulatory cells. Those are T helper cells, meaning that, and the T helper cell number 17. And these two cells help prevent autoimmune. It's kind of like the regulatory switch. Okay, is it too much of the, again, is it too much battle? Okay, let's turn it down, let's turn it up, let's turn it down. And it's like a flip switch. And when that flip switch is not working correctly, this is where you create autoantibodies against any tissue and the thing, the two main cells you want to keep in mind are those TH17 and the T regulatory cells. So when it comes to the autoimmune diseases, there's, a, there's many of them and they're all specific to what tissue is being attacked. Now, like for example, I'm just giving you an example autoimmune diseases per, per uh, body part, per tissue. Like your thyroid, you could have Hashimoto's, it could be Graves' disease for your thyroid. Because remember, an autoimmune disease is immune system attacking the tissue. It's not the tissue's problem. It's you have an overactive immune system. So when it comes to your blood, leukemia, lupus, like your GI tract, celiac disease, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, the nerves, it could be a peripheral neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy, Diabetes type 1 is an autoimmune disease against the pancreas. It could be your brain. Is it MS? Autism? Gillian Barre's? Is it psychological? You could have a psychological disease where your autoimmune disease, where your immune system is attacking your brain. It could be psychological. Bones? Rheumatoid arthritis? Ankylosing spondylitis? Remember, the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and regular osteoarthritis is that rheumatoid arthritis is always bilateral, where osteoarthritis is always just unilateral. Muscular is a fibromyalgia, is a muscular dystrophy. Skin, eczema, psoriasis, scleroderma, these are all autoimmune diseases where your cells are attacking the skin. The lungs, asthma. A lot of people don't realize that asthma is autoimmune. Yes, it's an autoimmune condition. So, how do things affect what triggers? What triggers your autoimmune disease? A couple different reasons. One, of course, stress. Stress will trigger any autoimmune disease. Why? Because it's the cortisol regulation. When you increase that cortisol release, it slows down a lot of the other body's mechanisms and it dampers the immune response. So you always want to watch that stress. Or is it an infection? Yes, when you have an infection, it increases the cortisol, your immune system goes haywire, okay? And it can't really regulate when it should turn off. Malnutrition, the standard American diet, processed foods, sodas, sugar, alcohol, a lot of that stuff causes inflammation in the body. Now remember, when you have an autoimmune disease, your body's already on high alert. You don't want to do anything that's going to create more that high alert. You want, things, you want to do things that calm it down. So again, so these are just some areas that 
can cause, can be the trigger and the reflection of an autoimmune disease. Like for your gut health, if again, if you have poor gut health, what's going to happen? Impaired digestive absorption, damage to the intestinal lining, leaky gut, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. You're going to have a micro microbiome imbalance. Our body wants a nice microbiome, which again, it's the normal flora to help regulate, regulate all the homeostasis. It, so which again, creates an imbalanced immune response. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Liver dysfunction, what's going to happen if something, if you have a liver dysfunction, is it going to be a fatty liver due to medications, due to diet? You're going to have weight gain, toxic accumulation, nausea, headaches, blood sugar regulation. Yes, it's all going to trigger and cause your autoimmune condition. Allergies, food allergies, food sensitivities, seasonal allergies, food additives, preservatives, chemical sensitivities. Your body doesn't like any of this stuff, so if you introduce all this insult to your body, it's going to, throw, it's going to create an immune response. So yes, this could trigger the, your autoimmune condition. Infections, Epstein-Barr, HPV, Lyme, chronic strep, infections, bacterial, Staph, H. pylori. If you have an H. pylori infection in your gut, yes, fix your gut. Mold, shingles, any type of viral variabilities, things like that, yes, that could trigger your autoimmune condition. Toxicities, is it like heavy metals? Is it... Mercury, lead, copper overload, mycotoxins, arsenic, DDT, fluoride, all of this stuff, again, is it Roundup? Is it pesticides? Is it insecticides? Do you live in an area where it's heavily uh, contaminated? Yes, that will affect your body. That will affect your autoimmune condition. Nervous system, you're going to have an increased brain, brain and body response. Things are going to be more hypersensitive. What's going to happen, the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the longest nerve of the body, okay? 80% of the vagus nerve is your parasympathetic, rest, digest, and repair. And when, you're, when you have an autoimmune dysregulation, that's going to throw that off kilter. So yeah, you're going to have a dysregulated, disrupted homeostasis. Your body temperature, you're going to go hot to cold. You're going to be moody. Your metabolism is going to be either too fast or too slow. Cognition, digestion, neurotransmitter imbalance. If you're not breaking down your food products, then the, neuro, then the proteins which build up your neurotransmitters, the dopamine, the serotonin, the GABA, things like that, yes, it's going to be, you're going to have a brain and body dysregulation. Hormones, this is big. This is big because when you disrupt the hormonal imbalance, if you disrupt your autoimmune condition, with all the above, yes, the adrenal hormones, which is part of your body's stabilizer, that's going to be thrown off balance. Cortisol, DHEA, which creates other hormones. Cortisone, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. I've treated many females and males who have had autoimmune conditions, and the reason why the autoimmune conditions are flaring up is because of the adrenals, uh, the adrenal uh, hormones, they have a dysregulation, so it's not producing enough testosterone, progesterones, and hormones. Pregnenolone, comprehensive thyroid hormones. The, I always recommend thyroid hormone, do a comprehensive thyroid panel. It'll tell you everything that's going on. In addition, it's going gonna, it's gonna to indicate, because most of hypothyroid conditions are autoimmune. They're Hashimoto's, so just keep that in mind. So when you have all this stuff going on, what do you do? What is the, the to-do list? I always recommend try to get off the, if you go to your primary doc, what are they going to do? They're going to give you cortical steroids. They're going to give you some type of steroid which helps calm down the inflammation, but it's not going to help the cause. If most of your immune system is in your gut, key thing is you want to watch what's put in your gut. So let's clean up your gut. You want to remove foods and factors that damage the, the gut. Stay away from the processed foods, the sugars, the wheat, the gluten, the soy, the dairy, the sugar, and the peanuts. Remove that. Next, replace. Replace with healthy foods. The anti-inflammatory diet. You want to take in some good uh, grass-fed beef. 
You want to take some good um, vegetables and fruits. You want to pay, repair the gut lining with some spe so with specific supplements and enzymes. If you're not digesting your food, you need certain enzymes to help digest those foods and break those down until we repair until until the gut lining is fully repaired. And then you want to rebalance. You want to rebalance a normal flora with probiotics because that's going to help with the gut intestinal lining. But most also importantly is vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is a pro-hormone. It's not really a vitamin. It has a plethora of functions to the body. It's good for your brain. It's good for calcium absorption. But how it affects the immune system is, remember, the Th17 and the T regulatory cells, they're imbalanced. Those regulate the immune response. So when you're low in vitamin D3, that's going to throw it off. So you always want to supplement with vitamin D3. I always recommend, I live in the Chicagoland area, 10,000 IUs a day. Okay, if you live in the sunny areas, you may want to take a little bit less. But if you're going to take, again, vitamin D3 is very, very important because that helps regulate that TH17 cell. It helps stabilize it. And that will help with the autoimmune condition as long as you fix the food and your gut. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions or if you want to schedule me for a consultation one-on-one, -on -one, please follow the link below. I'll be more than happy to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. You go to my webpage and you go to my GenBooks calendar and I'd love to talk, hear from you. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.